Boss Rush 700 Day 2. So this is not really a great farming day, so it's basically going to be a one and done. Uh, if you want to do it on 700, we've got a pretty easy comp for it. It just takes a little bit. Um, if you wanted to, you could also drop it down to 110 or 120 and just do it for your 150 renown. Um, but our day one farm is very good right now. So you really want to just maximize your runs on day one and get as much renown as you can. Uh, after I do this day two run, I'm going to go back over the day one comps and show how they've been kind of polished up and uh, a couple, one other additional option to do day one. So if you want to just see that, you can skip ahead. Uh, but I'm going to run the day two here first. So our comp for day two, I'm just using an Elise Cadgar comp and then a bunch of artillery strikes. So we're running Monkey's Paw on Elise, Bitter Chill on Cadgar, Kill Nine Strength on Gin, Rounded Drinks on Edwin, Scout Spyglass on Rogers, and Briny Bracers on Eudora, because we don't really want to clog our board with a bunch of cannons. Um, and then I'm going to go over this Holmes comp, and I've also got a Mediv comp that basically just swaps out the Holmes for Mediv for day one. Um, the Holmes comp is really the better one. So that very first one I showed, as long as you get a strong enough uh, Belinda especially, that comp is really solid still, and it cleans up a lot of the randomness. Uh, for the Coral Elemental fight though, so we, we're we really just looking for no attack anomaly on the Coral Elemental. I'm going to reroll this. It's not worth fighting him when he has attack anomaly. Uh, the odds of getting an attack anomaly are also fairly low because as you can see we have the fish that are various colors that are never neutral. And when it assigns an anomaly, it um, it I believe it just chooses a random unit for each of the four anomalies and it gives you an anomaly based on that unit. So the odds of even hitting a neutral in the first place are fairly low. And then it has to hit attack when it hits that neutral, and he's also got nature as one of his anomalies. So the odds of getting a uh, no attack are pretty good. And with this comp, we don't care what the attack on the rest of them are. You can also run this without Elise, and you could bring someone else to cover the Hearthfire turn. Um, you can do that with taunts like Nimzy. You can do it with Gin's taunt as a help. Um, you could use Mediv plus Gin to do that. But I'm just going to use this here. Uh, what did we get for our nature? And I'm like, okay, that's not too bad. So we're basically just covering our Hearthfire with the Elise root. And then we're just going to spam roots with Cadgar. And then the only thing that really hurts us is the entangling roots that he occasionally casts from the Coral Elemental. It's just random how often he uses that, though. But it does have a one turn cooldown, so he doesn't ever use it on turn one, and he can only use it every other turn at most. So generally, your hearth fires, your Elise heals, and your Gin summons are enough to keep up with that. And in my experience, he has not really tried to shoot that at my Elise. I need to root, not hearth fire. Um, so I haven't lost my Elise to that, but he could shoot your Elise. If you've got a high enough nature anomaly and she's weak enough, you could lose her early. But as long as he's got low attack, you should be fine regardless of what happens. Um, on most of my runs, he's shot that Entangling Roots at the Cadgar basically every time. Okay, so if you've got enough Gin healing, you can get some free swings. Uh, as long as your Gin heal is bigger than the thing you're swinging into. Keep in mind, if you do swing into the Coral Elemental... He won't be rooted yet, since your root happens at 5 speed, so he will get that passive activation and get a free melee swing back into whatever's taunted or a random unit if you don't have a taunt. Okay, so we're going to do a heal here, a root, and get another summon out, and we get some free damage here. I usually try to just attack into whatever's got the highest health or whatever's not red, because uh, Cadgar gets free crits on reds, but we got a bunch of non-red stuff here. And over time, this uh, Do Not Touch will ramp up as his attack increases, so you may eventually lose your monkey, even though we got a no attack anomaly, but your um, your hearth fires will help keep it alive, and your uh, Elise heals. So hopefully you'll be able to keep your monkey alive. If not, though, it just slows the fight down. It's not a loss or anything. Also, on the turn that Elise can root again, if you need to heal really badly on your Cadgar, you can use the root and then use a Prismatic Bolt as an even speed to activate your Gin heal. 
Um, I don't really need to do that though, so I'm just going to do a guiding path to keep this monkey up. And we're going to keep shooting and get some more free damage here. So at the end of this, we do want to kill our Elise off. We don't really need her for the White King fight, and she's just going to reduce our artillery strike odds. So you can either do that by swinging with her into one of these high attack guys before they all die. Uh, keep in mind that the Star Seeker will activate your Gin heal because it's even. Uh, or you can just use the Monkey's boosted damage to shoot her with Khadgar and Gin. So I don't really worry about her until afterwards. Just be careful that with your monkey damage you don't accidentally kill the coral elemental before you take her out. Which I'm getting kind of close to here, but should be fine. We're just going to shoot her this turn. Um, could get another monkey, but there's not really any reason to. He's got such low hit points. So I'm just going to shoot her with that. And with this, so that'll take care of Elise. And then we don't really have to act with these. We could swing, but it doesn't really matter either way. It doesn't matter who we put out here. All right, that should be good enough. Okay, so now we're just hoping for an artillery strike and the the white king he just has summon random chess piece at seven speed and the single-minded pursuit attack from Maev uh, at five speed so it's basically just a melee swing so as long as you've got the ability to lock that down um which we do with Khadgar and we have the gin summon to cover the hearthfire turn since it's just a single melee attack coming in so we should be all set here it's much nicer if you hit like Atiesh on Khadgar to get a little damage scaling. It's also really good if you hit um, Spirit Blade on Edwin and it, Everywhere Worgen on Gin if you still have enough artillery strike damage and you can hit those. That helps a lot. All these are useless, so whatever. Uh, 40 Alliance could be nice. I guess I'll take that since I already have an artillery strike. In your artillery strike requirements, the, the highest are 250 HP. You've got blues and reds for that. So Maestra, Ice Hell, and Un Undead on Nixie are all 250 HP. Um, okay, so we're just going to run out Khadgar again. So that solves the fight, and it doesn't really matter who else we put out here. So I'm going to put out Rogers. Um, and I'll position these in the middle even though we're just going to kill them off. So on this fight, you're allowed five mercenaries all the time. So even when these die, you're still got five mercenaries. So if these die, you get to bring out your benchmarks. Um, so he's not even at attacking this turn. If he was attacking this turn, I would just blizzard. And the next turn, I would cover the hearthfire turn with the beastly beauty summon. But he's not even doing that, so we can just hearthfire for free. Uh, I don't want to do anything with Rogers. I'm just going to kill these off because they're just useless. And these extra chess pieces will give us a target to swing into with our or the alliance, so that'll be nice. We don't even really need to act with these guys, so I'm just going to chuck them over here on the right. Okay, so I'm going to do a little for the alliance here. And that should kill that. And then we just want to spam our root every turn. You can get a summon out if you want to, just for some safety in case you mess something up. And we don't have uh, Spirit Blade, so this guy's kind of useless. And Eudora's pretty useless as well, so we're just going to not act with them. Okay, and there's basically no incoming damage. 
Um, so I don't have to worry about Rogers getting to low HP here. So we'll just get our free for the Alliance. And we will use the Kingpin's Bounty, I guess. I guess that's good to do after for the Alliance, since you do get that. Spell power. None of this stuff actually benefits from for the Alliance unless you have a cannon in play and you use a coup d'etat. But um, none of this other stuff is going to be able to get any spell power. So Eudora is basically useless. We do have the extra pirate in place, so we got a double shot there. Nice quick kill with the for the alliance. We got some treasure upgrades, but we didn't really need them. So that that'll cover day two. So as I mentioned, uh, it's kind of just a one and done kind of day. It's not really worth farming. Um, I don't. I don't think anyone would really be able to farm this day better than day one. So to go back over the day one comps, uh, we've got the Holmes comp and the Mediv comp. So the Mediv comp. Uh, let me get past this so I can do the chapters things. So it'll I won't do the explanation before I set the chapter. Oh, oops, I'm gonna do day one, not day two. Okay, so we've got two comps here, the Holmes comp and the Mediv comp. The Holmes comp is the better comp uh, overall because you have less bounces, so you get through the fight quicker. And if you get your stats high enough, it eliminates the randomness as well. So the problem with the Holmes comp in general is the four speed muddy footings on turn one can sometimes shoot at your water elemental or kill your Belinda or both. Um, and then you can end up in some trouble there. But if you've got enough stats, it gets rid of, it eliminates that possibility. So the highest I've seen, it hits you for like 354, 355 damage on like a chain lightning. And that's with a 259 nature anomaly, I think is the highest that I've seen so far. Um, so if you get your Belinda up to like 350 or uh, 360 HP, somewhere in that ballpark, you should be safe from all of those outcomes. You don't have to get her that high though. Um, most of the time she won't die, and even if she does die, if you get your double freeze off with your elementals, that's fine. You're, you're perfectly safe there. You can just use your homes to elementary your Malkazar while the enemies are frozen on turn two, and then whenever they act on turn three, you should be fine. Um, and especially if uh, your Belinda lives, like say they mess, it messes up and you, it kills your water elemental and you don't get the, all your freezes off, like maybe you get one freeze or even no freezes. As long as you still have your Belinda, you can just do an extra bounce and still potentially get them frozen. Um, so you do have outs when things go wrong, but if you do get your Belinda big enough, it will eliminate all of those bad outcomes. Um, so you'll always have an answer if your Belinda is just strong enough, but that's not a hard requirement. You can still farm it very effectively if your Belinda is substantially weaker. But we do have this other comp here with Medivh that solves a lot of the issues. So it seems like this comp would not have um, the tools to prevent those things on turn one, but it turns out the AI just really loves shooting at the counter rune. So it kind of has like a spell taunt. So even though you do have an exposed Belinda, you do have an exposed Medivh, they just really like shooting at the, the counter rune, and they like shooting at Medivh as well, but it, you don't care if Medivh dies. It's just nice if, if him or the counter rune survives, but you don't they don't have to. So this comp is the same as the Holmes, Holmes comp. You've just swapped out Holmes for Medivh with the counter rune. So the equipment is the same. You got Electra Water, Water Elemental, Arena Contender, Unstable Runes on Medivh, three moves ahead on Malkazar, uh, Dragon's Mark, which is bugged and doesn't work anyway. And uh, I'm using Gildane Strength here. Now, you probably want to use Rogers if you need that additional artillery strike damage. I've swapped over to using Gen because he benefits from Belinda's fire scaling from Frostburn. And it gives you two, both your artillery strike mercenaries are capable of, at shoot, of shooting at your own guys. So if you need to kill off one of your mercenaries because the nature anomaly is really low or something, he's just a bit better at that. 
but you can use Rogers in that slot if you need that blue artillery strike damage. Um, you can also cut the Gilnean strength from Gen if you want him to not heal your mercenaries. I only use odd speed abilities on my things I'm trying to kill off anyway though, so I don't really care if he activates some healing here and there. But I'm going to show the Medivh comp first because I didn't show that yesterday, and then I'll show the, um, the Holmes comp, which is the better comp after that. But this one, if for some reason you you can't make the Holmes comp work because the, the amount of stats that you have, or if you like this comp better for some reason for the added safety, um, you could try this one out as well. It's just a, a little alternative. But uh, the other one should just be better. Okay, so turn one with this comp. Um, we've got a Chain Lightning and Tangling Roots here. So I'm just going to, you always attack with your counter rune, you always bounce with Bon Samdi, and then you can mage guard something here. So you could give your Belinda extra health if you wanted to. I'm going to have to kill her off later anyway, so I actually don't want to buff her. I'm just going to put some health on my water elemental to ensure that it survives. And with this comp, you can freeze whoever you want. It doesn't actually matter. So you kind of just want to fr freeze whatever is the most threatening thing that's at five speed or slower. So that's going to be the chain lightning here. And then I like to just shoot at my Medivh because if he gets hit by something, he's going to die anyway. And if I soften him up, um, that just makes it easier for me to kill him off later. And I just use whichever one's higher damage out of my Frost or my Flame Dart. The Frost Dart for me is the same rank, so it does more damage and it makes him take more damage from fire later. Okay, so that's very common. They'll just kill your counter rune there, uh, which you don't care about. If they kill Medivh, you have a counter rune in play next turn, which is actually even nicer. Uh, this turn, you always just run out these three, though, if you're able to. Because we've already frozen one, and now Malkazar is going to slow down the one that's not frozen. So even if he uses the four speed muddy footing, we can freeze him before he gets to act. So we just never do anything with him. We're going to ramp fire here. We're gonna swing with this and we're gonna bounce again. So this is why the Medivh comp is not as nice as the Holmes comp because you have to do this extra bounce here. Because we do still need a new water elemental to freeze when we let them unfreeze. So you're taking this extra entire turn. Okay, and now we just run those same three back out. But the advantage though is that if you're sometimes losing your Belinda or they're shooting your water elemental too often and it's messing up your turn one with the Holmes comp, having that Medivh and counter rune in play seems to very reliably make them uh, not do anything bad to you. So I'm just going to uh, shoot my own Bon Samdi here to ensure that he dies. You don't really have to do anything else other than making sure he dies. So we're always going to all realities here. We're always going to freeze this right hand guy and we're always going to deal a vanity and then we're going to look at what happens here. So this guy's using a chain lightning. That's already going to kill my Bonsomity, so we're all set there. If you needed to, you could shoot your Bonsomity again to uh, get him even lower. But this one here is only going to do 255. So this will do 376 if I were to shoot myself here. So I'm just going to shoot Malkazar to soften him up just in case I have to kill him with my own damage. You almost never need to do that though so i'm trying to set up my belinda so i can kill her off with a single shot but have her not die yet so that's why i didn't shoot her because that would have done just enough to kill her here and i want to put out only non-artillery strike marks on this turn because we don't really want to get like AOE'd on our artillery strike mercs unless we have to. So I'm just going to use an all realities here. I'm going to kill this guy with Medivh and then this guy's going to get his cast off for free. So I'm just going to soften up my Medivh here again because everybody's all prepped to uh, be taken out now. And if you got an, an Arc Druids call here, that'd be even better. Okay, he's just doing a Lightning Bolt, so I'm just going to let that cast. And I don't really need to do anything here. It's a lot better if he uses the call, but I like to bring out Gen, but you could bring out whoever here. 
Okay, so he's going to do a lightning bolt again, but... Let's see... I should have shot my Medivh last turn. That was a mistake, but that's fine. I'm just going to do this, because I can't kill off my Medivh just yet, since I didn't soften him up enough. So we're just going to turn Gen green, so that this doesn't kill him. Okay, and now we got an easy cleanup here. We just shoot Medivh with Gen, and then hit with a... Uh, Axe throw, and that should be faster than anything this guy can do. So I got a little unlucky. He never used the Archdruid's Call. Um, so it made me take an extra turn or two, but it's still a fast farm. Um, it's also faster if you get the... Alright, well we missed our artillery strike here, so that's a loss. Uh, I'm going to do one more with the Medivh comp real quick because I kind of want to show how it can go a bit better than that and hopefully we'll get luckier this time. So if they just shoot at Medivh on turn one and you, you get to keep your counter rune and your Belinda survives too, it's a bit faster because you don't have to do the extra bounce. So that's really the uh, ideal RNG for this comp is when they just kill Medivh on turn one. Okay, so we got Living Brand Brambles and Archdruid's Call, so we're going to freeze the call. We're going to bounce, and he doesn't really have to do anything because none of this stuff is going to happen before this. I'll just put a Mage Guard here. It doesn't really matter, though. And I'll soften up the Medivh again. doesn't really ma matter uh, if I did the less damage there, but... So I'm hoping he just kills Medivh. A lot of times they do just shoot the ward though. So the advantage if you have the ward here is on turn two, you put out the same Malkazar, Belinda, and Bonsamdi, but instead of freezing anything, you just pass. And the counter rune just counters whatever they do. Since there's only one unfrozen unit, and then you have that same setup that you do with the Holmes comp, where you have a water elemental and they're both unfrozen on turn three. Uh, but since we didn't get that, we do have to freeze here and do an extra bounce. Um, and then we'll just ramp with Belinda. Um, if you do have that counter rune turn, though, if they're acting at 8 speed or faster, you can shoot with Bonsamdi still and like soften up your own Bonsamdi. But sometimes they'll be 10 speed, like if the uh, you left the right hand guy unfrozen and he uses Archdruid's Call, the passive from Malkazar will slow him to 10 speed and then you won't be able to do anything and still counter, so you have to just pass the turn completely. But that's fine. You usually don't need to soften up your guys and you can use Belinda to soften up Blonde on this on the uh, unfreeze turn anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna soften up my Bonsamdi again here and we don't really need to do anything with these guys. Okay, so we always freeze here. Always vanity, always all realities. Let me just see what's happening here. So chain lightning, and that's going to get Valinda low, but not kill her. So I don't really need to do anything with her. So I'll just soften my Malkazar. Okay, now we're just throwing out the non-artillery strikes. And sometimes if you like lost your Medivh, you might need to put one of your artillery strike mercenaries out here. That's perfectly fine though. So I'm going to shoot him. This guy's just healing, so that doesn't really matter. You can delay this if you want, or you can go ahead and do it now. Either way is fine. And I'm going to damage my Medivh. This guy doesn't heal for enough for me to be concerned about whatever. And since you do have a counter rune uh, on some of these runs, you can choose to just pass if you want this to roll for something better, like you want to just do an Archdruid's cleanup. You can do that as well. Um, I'm just going to soften up my Medivh though and let this cast.
it'll probably shoot the counter rune. Okay, so we did get the Arstrid's call, so I'm going to let that happen. And we're just going to shoot him with Gin at 2 speed. You could use Rogers to do this as well. Alright, so that's basically the Medivh comp. We didn't get the nice one where we got to uh, just counter on turn 2. Because uh, they left our counter rune alive on turn 1, but... I think that covers the comp pretty well. So it's just an alternative um, to the Holmes comp. If for some reason this comp works out better for you. But the Holmes comp is the better one. It more reliably uh, has faster clears. Or not more reliably, but it has faster clears. And if you have the stats, it is just as reliable. I guess that's how I should phrase that. So just collecting our renown here. I did misspeak in my video yesterday and mentioned that you only needed 252 on your avalanche uh, to have it double upgraded but it's actually 352 <laughs> so minor correction there you need 360 by the time you get here so if you have 352 and you get a double upgraded artillery strike then you'll get up to 360 by the last boss Personally, I have a tendency to just gloss over the artillery strike requirements because I've had 400 for weeks now, if not months. Um, and so I really just do it for everyone else's benefit, but sometimes I, I've just kind of ignored it. By the time I get to the point that we're thinking about artillery strikes on the recording, I've not even thought about it. And so I'm kind of like on the fly thinking, okay, what is the actual artillery strike requirement here? Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly go back over the comp here in case you missed it from day one, but we got Lester Water Elemental, Arena Contender, straight up front, three moves ahead, Dragon's Mark, and I'm using Gildane Strength, but that could be Rogers if you wanted to use that for the uh, reds here, if you got lower artillery strike. But this is the farming comp. This is the one that I've been using uh, to farm with personally. And now that my Belinda is so large, um, even the worst outcome of like double muddy footing with a crazy high nature anomaly on turn one, I don't have any trouble with that. So I've never had them double shoot my Belinda with muddy foot. If they do use a double muddy footing, I've never had them shoot both of them at my Belinda. They always kill my homes and then shoot Belinda. Um, but if you did have that outcome and your Belinda is able to survive at least one of them, you could put this um, elementary on your water elemental and then shoot it with your Belinda to ensure that only one of the muddy footings goes off. But I've never had to do that. So um, I just do it this way. And I like to shoot my Holmes to set him up for uh, easier kill later if I need to shoot him. Okay, so that's a pretty common outcome. Sometimes Holmes survives, sometimes he doesn't, but we don't really care. So now we just run out our Malkazar, Belinda Bonsamdi. And on turn two, I usually just ramp with Belinda for fire, uh, since the fire benefits Gin and Voon. And then I shoot my own Bonsamdi because he's a little bit too big sometimes. If, the, if you know the nature anomaly is high enough, you don't have to do that. Um, so we always freeze here, we always vanity, and then I just check what this does. It's a chain lightning, so I'm going to soften my Malkazar. If this is an attack that does not chain lightning bounce into Belinda, then I'll usually shoot my own Belinda here to soften her up instead. The shot on Malkazar is not really important because the reds die to the incoming nature damage very reliably. But I just do that because why not? And then this is just whatever artillery strike merc you want to use um, to shoot this guy. Boon works fine for that as well. Uh, so does Rogers. And then we've got an Archdruid's call here. So that's going to take out these guys. 
uh, so I don't really need to do anything here. And if you have home still alive, there are different actions you can take here so that this dies on this turn without having to bring out your bench mercenary. Um, since I'm using Gen though, I just make sure I get him transformed and we don't have homes here so we have to take the extra turn every time. And then there's one run. So I'll do one more with this comp real quick and maybe we'll see some of the different variations of what can happen on those early turns. Down on artillery, there's 175 renown. So the different outcomes, um, basically if the, if both of the Moonkins cast at five speed or slower, you always just get a double freeze. So you don't have to worry about what they're shooting at. So it's really just the muddy footings that can change turn one. Um, if your Belinda's strong enough, then you don't have to worry about where those muddy footings go at all. Um, because if your Holmes dies, it doesn't matter as you just saw. If they shoot at your water elemental, it always gets at least one freeze. So then that means that at most your Belinda would get shot by one additional muddy footing. So if that happens, then she's going to live as long as she can tank that hit. And then on turn two, you can just do an extra bounce. And then that will cover the... Um, it'll get the second guy frozen and allow you to get a third water elemental out on turn three. And then you'll have the same setup with both enemies frozen. You let them unfreeze. You freeze the guy on the right. And everything proceeds as normal. Um, and then they could shoot Juan Samdi. Also doesn't matter. They could shoot... The only, so the only bad outcome would be if they double shot at Belinda. And as I mentioned, if that ever starts happening, you can just shoot your own water elemental and ensure that that water elemental freeze goes off before one of the muddy footings and then only one would shoot Belinda and she would survive that as well. So if you can get your Belinda's hit points higher than the nature anomaly uh, plus 95, because it's the base damage on muddy footing is five, and then you get the 90 from the passive on Salorn Amberwind, then you'll be able to survive uh, any of the permutations of turn one. Okay, so we got a very high nature anomaly. So you'll get to see, if, if they do the muddy footings here, you'll, you might be able to see some of the uh, high damage. But So this would do 300 and, um, 350 damage on a muddy. We didn't even get a muddy, so they're not even going to do anything to me. So we just swing on the right. I'm going to shoot my homes here and bounce. You don't have to shoot your homes. Uh, he tends to die anyway, but I have had him survive sometimes on the lower nature anomalies. So I just, as a habit, shoot him on turn one so I don't have to pay attention to what the enemies are doing. Okay, so it's always Malkazar Belinda 1 here. Okay, so I usually, like I said before, I just ramp and shoot my Buon. I don't have to shoot my Buon since we do have a high nature anomaly. I just do it anyway out of habit. Okay, and then we've got a muddy footing here. So Belinda's not going to take any damage this turn. So I'm going to shoot my Belinda. And then we freeze the right and redirect Buon. I've seen a, people, a couple people ask... Uh, how do we cast all realities twice in a row? It's because of the death rattle from Bon Zombie's Arena Contender equipment. When he dies, he refreshes two on all of your abilities. So that refreshes the all realities. Okay, so there is actually a way here. If, if this does enough damage, so this is gonna do like just over 255, so that will kill my Belinda. You can shoot here, and you can cast the, um, obviously, the murderer on this guy. And then he'll die when he kills your stuff. This doesn't happen for me too often, because my Belinda's so big. 
that I usually have to damage her to ensure that she dies. But this is a way that you can get these guys to die on this turn without your having to go through bringing out your additional bench mercenaries. Since he'll go to 5 HP, he'll kill your guys and then he'll die to that Holmes ability. Um, another one that I'm able to do sometimes is um, if my Holmes survives that turn and I've got Holmes and Gin in play, I can sometimes elementary my Gin and put him across from the, the Moonkin and then when the shield gets broken on my Gin, he swings into them. But you have to be a little bit careful with that because they can have pretty high attack and if your Gin plus your elementary health buff from the shield breaking are not high enough, you can lose your Gin on that crackback. But those are two ways that you can kind of shave off an extra turn off the end of the fight there. Uh, so you don't have to go through the animations of bringing out your bench mercenaries. So I think I've pretty much covered all the different permutations of the day one fight uh, for both of those comps. So I'm going to go ahead and call it after this one. But definitely get as many runs as you can in on this farm before it goes away. We do have an entire week, so pace yourself. You don't have to burn out on day one trying to do like 18 hours of grinding or something if you have that kind of time to, to dump into it. But uh, it is, it, it's is—it's been like a month since we've had a farm like this where you can just collect Renown with a really quick first fight. So um, we, we were luckier in the like months preceding this past month but um i don't we we never you know there's no guarantees that we're going to get a good farm again for quite a while so this might be one of your only opportunities to stock up on renown so that you don't fall behind in the future weeks so seven turns pretty good uh for 175 renown good luck on your runs